In this section, we're going to talk about something called cyclical unemployment. And so, um, we you've seen a little bit about it already, but cyclical unemployment is basically the unemployment caused by the the the, the, the business cycle, so, right? So this is the it goes up and down. And so we, we've seen already that the uh, unemployment rises when the economy slows down, right? So we got and we know our U rate rises when the economy slows. Okay, so we're going to try to explain that. So there's some other kind of underlying long-run unemployment, but this is the short run that's caused by these fluctuations that we're going to talk. Now, here's what we would expect. So let's use a simple supply and demand model and see what we would expect. We would ex uh, Actually, if we use the simplest supply and demand model, we wouldn't expect this to happen. And so we're going to try to talk here why this happens. Um, so here we got our wage. And here we have the number of workers that are, that are employed, the quantity employed maybe. Let's call it E. Uh, okay, so we got a we got a supply curve. So the supply curve. This is the workers, right? This is our workers, and we got our firms. They want to hire people, and we get an equilibrium. So let's live our equilibrium. So before our um, and we're gonna have a recession happen. So before our recession, this is our wage, and this is the number of people who are employed. Um, maybe I'll just call this E, so we so we can keep consistent. So this is E. So this is the number employed. Um, now, the recession comes, so we expect the recession comes, so uh, we get a recession, and so the, the company is going to want to hire less workers. So we get a decrease in demand for labor, so we get our decrease in demand for labor, and we expect that it's going to cause two things to happen. We expect it's going to cause the employment to fall, and this, is, this seems reasonable, so less people are going to have jobs, but we also expect it to have the wages to fall, okay, so less people have jobs and less employment, and so yes, people do lose their jobs, but uh, from the wages falling, they're going to also have less people want to work, right, so if wages are falling, some people will decide, oh, well, it's not really worth it for me to work, um, maybe I'm going to stay home and uh, take care of my children now because it's not worth it for me to pay for daycare anymore at these lower wages, um, some people who are maybe like semi-retired or kind of working for fun may also decide it's not worth it for them to be in the, in the labor market anymore. Oh, right. anyway, so we expect there to be less employment, but we also expect because the wages are falling, the workers are a little bit less willing to work. And so um, these people wouldn't necessarily be unemployed. They might just decide to leave the labor force because the wages are lower, right? So we expect, we expect wages to adjust, right? So we expect, well, wages fall, fall and employment falls, okay? But we don't expect a bunch of unemployment. We expect maybe people are not employed, but they, we would more expect them to leave the labor force in this case. Um, so what's going on? Why do we get this big increase in unemployment when we have a recession, even though our basic model doesn't predict it? So the idea is, well, so, so this is the puzzle. Let's go to this. So they were saying, well, why do we get this fall? So why uh, do we get a big, increase in the unemployment rate? And the answer seems to be at least partially related to, well, we have sticky wages. And so what do we mean by sticky wages? Well, the wages don't move very easily, right? Something keeps them from changing. So, and this is especially, seems to be especially true going down. So the wages have a hard time to fall, okay? So things keep them from falling. And so um, we can see then in our chart, well, what does that look like if the wages don't fall? Let's go ahead and draw another graph. Um, okay, so we've got our wage, and we've got our employment here. Okay, so well, our workers here. So we've got, uh, let's do our supply and our demand. Okay, so now again, let's do the same thing. We start off, we start off at this W0. But now something different happens. Um, and Well, this is the same. We get a recession. A recession causes them to demand less workers. Okay, But now we have sticky wages. So we'll talk in a second about why they might be sticky. So if we have sticky wages, then the wage doesn't fall. So we don't go to this new equilibrium where the red line and the, and the black line are crossing. Instead, we stay where we're at. So we got our sticky wages. So now this is the workers, this is how much they want to work, but 
at this same wage with the lower demand for labor now because of the slowing economy, this is how much the firms want to hire people, right? So we get a difference between these two, and this difference between these two is, so a lot of people still want to work, the same number of people want to work as before, but the firms don't want to hire as many workers, so this is unemployment. This is unemployment. So these are workers that uh, they still want to work, but because the wages are the same as before and uh, the demand for labor is much lower because the economy is not doing as well, maybe the, the business is slowing down, um, they're not selling as well, there's not as many customers in your restaurant, so they want to, they want at this wage, they want to cut the number of workers. Um, if the number, if, and so then you end up with a lot of people who want to work and not that many jobs available. So um, this, this is kind of the basic idea. We can use our supply and demand to show this. So well, the question is, well, why? So why is it sticky? So this is what our supply and demand predicts. Um, if you're having any trouble with this, you probably want to uh, go back and look at the supply and demand graphs we did before. And so then we're looking, we're focused on the downwards. So we're referring, why don't the wages fall? So this why is sticky, it means why aren't the wages falling in this case? Right? Why are they stuck at this W0? So uh, there's a lot of ideas. Let's just go through some of the basic ones. So um, one is the minimum wage, but this is tiny. This is a tiny part, okay? So because very few workers are actually at the minimum wage, um, the vast majority of minimum wage workers are actually uh, teenagers. Uh, well not, I, don't, I don't know if it's the vast majority, but a large part of the minimum wage workers are teenagers um, or people with their first, first job. So this is a very tiny part of the U.S. labor force actually works for minimum wage. Um, that would play a role, especially if minimum wage was quite a bit higher. It would be a bigger role. So uh, one, one factor could be union contracts. So union contracts often specify what pay will be, um, not just now, but into the future. And so uh, this would often limit uh, a union company from, from cutting wages during a recession, right? Um, so this would then mean that they, instead of cutting wages during recession, then our model would predict, well, if they can't cut the wages during recession, they could um, do layoffs. Yeah. And sometimes there's a negotiation in a very big recession. There might be a negotiation with the union to um, get them to, to agree to, to temporary wage cuts um, in lieu of laying off people. But often they will, they will choose to lay off people. Um, I actually went through a situation like this when I was uh, teaching at a, at a different school in the past. Um, and during a recession, uh, they had major cuts to their budgets and they had to decide what to do. And again, the union in the end decided to, that they would rather lose workers than cut wages. So that was really good for the, uh, the people who had been working there a long time because they, uh, their jobs were stable and safe and they still got paid a lot of money. Well, as much money as they were before. Um, and, but it was really bad for the new teachers because they were the ones to get the ax, right? So, uh, but this is also not a humongous part of the U.S. labor force that is in, uh, unions. Uh, but there, even people who are not heavily unionized, uh, still have often long-term contracts. So, like, for example, um, this would make it a little bit sticky. Lots of people have a contract for a year or sometimes even multi-year contracts. And the, the, the wage is typically stated in these contracts. So even in the short run, um, like a year, a lot of firms who are not even union still couldn't change their wages. Um, the fourth one is, maybe you might find it kind of interesting, is something called efficiency wages. So efficiency wages are when a firm pays above market rate to give incentive to work hard. So they're above market rate, and these are incentives to work hard. So some some companies uh, you you often will have heard of them as as a, a company that's like a good place to work a good place to work uh, so we get the idea here so and this would be companies like um, I think one that was kind of well known for this I don't not totally sure if they still do is Costco though they pay a little bit more than you're going to work at a, and make at another supermarket or a similar kind of store and a little bit better benefits. And the idea is that their workers will work harder and give better, better customer service, etc. So if firms are paying efficiency wages, then they're going to be afraid that if they cut these wages, well, they will save a little bit of money, but the workers will become less productive, less happy. And so in the end, it won't benefit their company. So right. So if, uh, if quite a few companies in, in the in the economy are paying efficiency wages, this will also tend to keep them sticky. In fact, these will be above market rate all the time, 
and and that will tend to cause unemployment. Um, so the uh, the kind of last one would be this argument about uh, it's called something called adverse selection. So that's that it will sort of select things in a bad way. Um, the last one we're going to talk about here. And so that's like the, the your best when you lower their wages. So let's suppose you when the recession comes, you just cut their wages. Well, who's the most likely to decide they don't like that and to leave? So it's probably your best workers. So your best workers are probably the most likely to find another job. The best workers are the most likely to leave. Okay. So and so the, if a company doesn't want to take a chance on losing their best workers, then they're going to keep the wages where they're at um, so that these workers don't decide to leave. So we get all, all these kind of reasons. There also could be kind of a psychological reason. It's been shown clearly that people don't like losing. Um, they, they dislike losing more than they like gaining. So in, in this case, again, the workers wouldn't like the idea of their wages being cut, uh, even if it makes sense. And even if, if they were cut, everybody could keep their jobs or almost everybody would keep their jobs. So um, we get the idea. So this sticky wages, especially sticky downward, is important because then we get the, it leaves us with this prediction that when we see big falls in the demand for labor, rather than seeing big cuts in wages, we'll see big um, increases in unemployment. And so it gives us this basic result. Uh, this I, Hopefully you find this a little bit interesting that we can apply this um, supply and demand framework that we learned in the previous chapter, and we can use it to look at something practical, and it gives us an actual pretty clear prediction about what should happen. Um, go ahead and check out the other video um, as well that will give you a, maybe a, a little different viewpoint on this same topic.